Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Steve Dismuke with First Priority. This week is Conversation with Peers, and Lauren Lucas from Danville High School is going to bring you a message on how to have those conversations and be connected with your peers to tell them about Christ. Uh, I'd encourage you during this time to pray and not panic. We need to pray more and panic less and know that God is in control. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11 says, Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. So if we're looking to the Lord, we can receive strength from Him. We seek His face and uh, our focus is on Him and a lot of things that we're in a panic about will surely go away. Um, I'd encourage you to continue to have faith and not fear. Have faith and not fear during this time and God will pull you through. I hope you enjoy this message. We'll see you next week. God bless. Well, hey there, First Priority family. Um, I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Lauren Lucas, and I am a sophomore at Danville High School. And I am so excited to be here with you all today to talk about Jesus and to talk about what it means for us to tell others about him and just the amazing privilege that we have um, to do that. So, um, yeah, today we are talking about um, what it means to have conversations with your peers. Um, about Jesus and about Christianity and sort of, you know, what that means and how we can do that. Um, and I think that's really important. It can be a really hard thing to do and it can be a really scary thing to do. But um, in all reality, it's really just an incredible thing that we get to do. It's a gift and um, it could, it's something that uh, when we have the right tools, which we do, we can be really excited about. Um, so in thinking about the whole idea of having conversations with your peers, I really got thinking about that word peers because we get told that word a lot, I think, especially in school, you know, the people that we sort of have grown up with in school, those are our peers. Um, but if someone were to really ask me like, what's the definition of peers? I would have no idea. Like, it's just one of those words that gets told to me all the time. So I'm a little bit of a word nerd. So I did look it up. Um, so dictionary.com says that a peer is a person who is alike in qualifications, abilities, or backgrounds to you. So that was a pretty cool definition. It gave me a little bit more insight, but the definition that I liked the most that I found was Webster dictionaries. And all it said was an equal. And I kind of really loved that because it reminded me how we're all equals because we're all sinners. And so if you think about a peer, your peers as people who are equal to you, people who are sinners, um, man, that's, that's everyone. That's everyone around us. Um, we are called to spread the gospel to, to everyone, all of our fellow sinners, because they deserve to experience that same love and that same grace and forgiveness and that same truth that Jesus gives us. Um, and it's our job and our privilege to get to share that with them. Um, but as I did say, that can be really hard and it can be really scary. And I know for a lot of us, it can be difficult to even know where to start. And so that's why I'm really excited to get to chat with you guys about, um, what this sort of looks like for us, because, um, this book, um, the Bible, the gospels, Jesus has all the answers we could ever need. And so I am really excited to just get to unpack that with you all. So I'm going to pray and then we will get right into it. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for everything that you've given us. Thank you for your grace and for your truth and for your love. That is all of those things that are beyond anything we could ever deserve. Thank you for being here with us right now. Thank you for never leaving us. Thank you that we're able to talk to you and learn more about you. Um, thank you for the life that you lived um, and for the example that you gave us to just know how to be more like you every single day and share your incredible story with the world. Um, thank you for just the way you teach us um, to lead others. And I pray that you set off a spark in each of our hearts to be able to do just that. We love you and it's in your name I pray. Amen. All right, so I want to start off by reading you a, um, pas a little passage in the Bible that 
I think most all of us have heard before, but I want to unpack it a little bit. So it's Matthew 28 verses 19 through 20. And here's what it says. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So this is a really cool verse for a couple of different reasons. First of all, the Lord gives us this incredible challenge to go and spread, go and spread his word, go and spread his commandments, go and spread his story. And it talks about baptizing them. And basically in our context, that means showing them what it means to have a relationship with him and giving them the opportunity to know that they can have that relationship um, and Jesus wants to have that relationship with them. So that is a really cool challenge, I think, um, and something that, you know, God has really blessed us with, um, the gift to be able to do that and spread that around to other people. But the other really amazing thing that I think he says here is he says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And I think this is really cool because he's reminding his disciples as well as us that we're not alone. He's going to help us through this. We aren't going off and fighting this battle almost on our own. Um, he is there. He will always be there. And he's going to help us and guide us um, through this sort of adventure that he sent us off on. And I think that's really cool. And he does. He gives us everything we need through the Gospels. Um, through his story, he gives us everything we need to know about what it's like to spread to spread his story, to spread the gospel. And so I think um, a really cool way to think about it is breaking it down to three steps. Um, I think that is a really cool way to just think about it and help us follow um, as much as we can to show Jesus to the rest of the world. So here are my three steps. My three steps are pray, care, and then share. And so we're going to break those down a little bit, starting with prayer. Now, prayer is really cool. Um, prayer is another gift that God has given us um, that we can use to stay connected to him, to ask him questions, to thank him, to um, glorify him, to worship him, to get to know him better. And when it comes to spreading the gospel, Prayer is a really cool tool that we can use to sort of prepare ourselves, to prepare our hearts um, for what, what we get to do when um, we spread the gospel. And Jesus used prayer as well. In fact, it says in Matthew 14, verses 13 through 14, it says, When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot. From the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. So basically, two major things happen in this little passage. Jesus goes off by himself to spend time with the Father, and then Jesus goes off to serve. And I think it's really important to notice that he spends time with the Father first. He spends time praying um, and spends time talking to God before he goes off to share the gospel, before he goes off to serve, um, before he goes off to heal. Um, because he knew the truth in the fact that we can be filled up by God so that we can then fill up other people with God's love and God's grace and God's truth. But we can't do that unless we are filled up ourselves. Um, and so he does that by praying. He goes off by himself and, and he prays. And that's really cool because I believe that prayer connects, prayer encourages, and prayer prepares us for going out and sharing the gospel. So that's a really cool thing that Jesus um, shows us that we can do to prepare us for sharing his story. The next step is care. And in sort of thinking about the whole idea of caring, um, I thought of this sort of cliche thing that you've probably heard before is that actions speak louder than words. Um, but it's true. Our actions towards other people are going to speak way more than any words that we could ever say to them about Jesus. They will be able to see something different in us because we act differently and we act differently because of Jesus. And that gives us an outlet to be able to speak truth into them. 
Um, and Jesus does this. Jesus healed. Jesus encouraged. Jesus gave. And Jesus listened. And he did all of these things to show the love of the Father to other people. And he calls us to do the same thing. So in Proverbs 3, verses 27, and this is the message version. I really loved what it said. It said, never walk away from someone who deserves help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. And another verse is Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13 verse 16 and it says do not forget to do good to share with others for such sacrifices God is pleased so that's a really important part too and our third part is share the Lord has given us an incredible gift to share and this is really exciting he has given us his story so in Psalm 96 in, um, in verse 3, it says, Publish his glorious deeds among nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things that he does. Now, this comes from David, and he is singing and praising God for all that he has done. And basically, what is what gets to happen is the Lord has filled us with love and blessings. And because of that, we're going to want, we should want to be able to tell other people about that. We should not be able to keep silent about the incredible things that the Lord has done for us. Um, and so if you want to think about, you know, it's easy to get to think about how do I tell people? How do I tell people? Just tell people your story. Your testimony is the way that Jesus has worked in your life to be able to share with other people and bring other people closer to him. And that is really important. So tell your story and know that it's okay to not have all the answers. So those were our three steps, pray, care, and share. And those are really important to remember when it comes to, um, it comes to sharing the gospel. Um, and that should be a goal for us because we want to spread that gospel and lead other people to Jesus. Um, I have a good friend and she is such an amazing um, young woman of God. And she says that um, all of our goals should be to make heaven crowded. And I love that. I love the, the picture of heaven just being flooded with all of these people who have been able to experience God and what he has for us. Um, so I pray that you use these three steps. I pray that God gives you courage and wisdom so that you can stand up and you can make heaven crowded. <laughs> Let me pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for creating in us a story that is so amazing. Thank you for telling us how, showing us how to just spread your love and to spread your story so that we can tell others about you. We can share your story. We can make heaven crowded. God, I know you're preparing room. I know you have a plan and I pray that you use us as your vessels to spread your word. Thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to be able to do that. And we, I just pray in Jesus name for courage and for strength to be able to do just that. We love you, and it's in your name I pray. Amen. Everyone have a good day, and stay safe.